Italy being so competitive, which I've got to say it is really fantastic. I, I tweeted out yesterday, I don't really need Italy to win this. I just want them to be good. I want to go into Italy matches and watch them not knowing what's going to happen and, and just to see if they're going to win. And I think we're, we're really getting that now. It's fantastic. Because they are now quite good, it sort of means that the, the days of, of rotating and sort of resting players or trying out some new combinations against Italy are, are kind of forgotten for now, which brings us to, to what England might do. And and I just want to ask you both about Mario Tojo and how he's playing and whether you wonder whether England might consider doing something different here. But personally, I don't think they will. And I think some of the overreactions to, to his performances have been a bit hysterical given it's one game. But, but can you see, is there any way that England might look to change him or, or change other certain selections against Italy? It doesn't seem like they can afford to anymore, does it? Charlie, I'll come to you. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> I think... Sorry. Oh, we, so what we what we heard in the build up to this game and what was kind of borne out, I think, by the by the selection of Chesson um at lock was that Cordy Laws was gonna be at lock. Um I didn't see necessarily that, that was that was um that felt quite punchy. Um but it looks like that was the way it was gonna gonna go. Um so whether Laws coming back in and being considered as a lock with someone like Willis coming back into the to the back row too. Whether that it was interesting that Lewis Ludrum was used um, in the lineup quite a lot um, as that auxiliary kind of third jumper. Um, maybe that could be the kind of the way Thurtoji going out of the side. I can't see it. Um, I think I was just going to get if um, I'll give it give an answer, then Charles can go back and I'll just go and have, have a look at some stats from the game. But um, Maratoji conceded, always gets a lot of um, black for conceding penalties. He conceded two penalties. Um, which is the same as Oli Chesson. Um, I think in games where England have a lot of possession, he isn't necessarily going to be as eye-catching just because his defensive disruption is as is is kind of his super strength, to borrow a, a broad bookism. Um, Chesson was the more eye-catching character, uh, carrier. Um, there was, I think, I think Itoji was involved in the in the clear out of the Scotland penalty at the end where. Obviously, Scotland, um, Scotland were rewarded with a penalty, but could have gone either way. Um, he's running a line out, I believe, which um, was a really, really good battle with Scotland. Um, I just, I just think maybe he's been a victim of these having these performances with huge highlight reel moments in them. Um, it's not last last year that his performance against Ireland was one of the best I've seen individually. Uh, think maybe he's been a bit of a victim of his own kind of um, own standards in the past he has had quiet games over the last year I won't um, should you quote that um premiership final he was particularly quiet I thought um but I think you know nobody's no we've seen nobody is a kind of automatic choice in this in this England side perhaps now apart from Farrell with the captaincy and Gench. um so they will I think they will consider it um, with with if not certainly more so if laws is fit, but I would certainly give him the benefit of the doubt. I I I completely agree. In fact, we were touching on it there, Charlie. But the the only phrase that I've written down when I was sort of thinking about Maratoje is just a victim of his own success. Because Shamati burst on the scene um, and started playing at a level that was such a high level that that we we immediately or now have such high expectations of him, which we should have. But then if he has one quiet game, it's it it, it was him, him have a bad game on Saturday by any stretch of the imagination, but perhaps he was just slightly below that very world class standard that we've expected of him. And yet in that Ireland game with the Six Nations last year, he was phenomenal. Um and you look at some of the Lions tests as well, he was phenomenal. And actually for Saracens this season, we shouldn't overlook the fact that he has been excellent more often than not. Yes, he was also very quiet in that premiership final last year. Um, but I, I just I, I'm just slightly disagree with Charlie here. I think I just can't see any scenario whereby Steve Borfoot will drop Mario Tejas, and I, and I don't and I think he's right to not to as well, especially if he's running the line out, which is obviously such a sort of secretive, probably the wrong word, but an unseen area where we're not even really we are privy to, to to how how that's run and how successful it's run. Uh, only the coaching staff and the players are privy to that. And admittedly, England did lose three lineouts on 
um, uh, on their own row on Saturday. But again, we don't know the machinations of that. We don't know who necessarily was at fault. Only the coaching staff will know that from the from the sort of books that they put in place and the system that they put in place. So just so just to kind of like back up those, that point on carrying. So Maritoji five carries, and he's credited with two meters. So that's a lot. A lot of that is in heavy traffic, clearly. Whereas Chesham more suited more suited to those wide exchanges, and he got a big break. He got two big breaks, didn't he? One down the blind side off a potentially off Port Fleet offload when he's when he's sniped down the blind side, and then another as as Van Port Fleet sniped again. So he he ended up with forty nine meters from. Um, 11 carries, which obviously had a lot more eye catch. But it's OG 12 tackles with no miss. Um, you had George with 10 carries, 10 tackles with no miss, and then anybody anybody anywhere near that. And the only player anywhere near that was Ben Curry. He popped it with 13, 13 tackles with four mid. Um, so his output in there, and it'll be really interesting to see the, the rep numbers as well. I'm sure it's OG is very high on that um, ringling because he's often in those middle pods hitting those rucks. Um, the, the unfussy stuff and the stuff that knits together the side, and I think he's he's in the thick of, and calling the line out, we know how tough that is because it clearly takes time to get good at it because it's taken Maritoji a while to kind of settle into that job, and I think he's kind of admitted that himself. But one thing I would say, just in, in response to that, the point Charles has made there, is we can tell it's well, we can tell the line out's well called when they do they do what they did for Ellis Genge's try when they um, when they get the penalty for the ball that, that they peel away from the ball that Genge scores a couple of phases later. That just is really clever. And that's come from the strategy around the line-out, which is what Etoji is in charge of on the field. Yeah, I, I just think it's a bit mad, this whole notion of dropping. You've only got a couple of potentially world class players in this thing side. Tom Curry is currently injured, Mara is the other. I, mean, I, I think if you said to most test coaches if they had the option of selecting in Toja that you might leave him out because of one one game where he wasn't there, they spell one invest, I think they'd probably laugh you out of the room. To be honest, his his six out of tens and seven out of tens are often better than most locks nine out of ten. And and so I think it's kinda of crazy to even suggest that you would think to go elsewhere with him because he is so vital in some of what he does is he's on see that he's going to be a huge part of this ball side. Yeah, and I think yeah I don't think there needs to be much more discussion about that 